welcome back to the channel. Today you find me outside the red brick building here in Glastonbury. If you live in Glastonbury, you know what the red brick building is. It's a community centre, an art centre. There's a restaurant here. Many, many things going on. I'm not here to talk about that today though, because it was once something else. It was once a factory and it would produce sheepskin goods. Now, if you look over there, what's known locally as a zigzag building, again to do with sheepskin and i don't know if you can see you can't but if you keep going that way a little way you come to more factories where more sheepskin goods were made so today i've come here for a really interesting exhibition it's called here forever and it's about the moorlands and bailey sheepskin factories and the history that sheepskin production and manufacture and processing has had in Glastonbury because it was a major, major, major industry. You talk to anybody over the age of 60 and they pretty much, if they were born here, will know somebody who worked here or if they didn't work here, they worked here themselves. Together with Clark's, the shoemakers, just up the road in the street there, you can see it was quite a busy industrial area. So let's go and have a look at this exhibition. So this exhibition is about the experience of people who used to work here. At their height, Moreland employed around 2,000 people and Bailey's around 200. So it was a big employer. And even as late as the 70s, kids leaving school at 15 had choices. They worked for Bailey's, they worked for Moreland's, they worked for Clark's, they joined the army. That was it. Some went into farming, but not that many. The big employers were the sheepskins and the shoes. Working in the tannery was hard. Men worked long shifts and they worked with wet skins, which weighed a lot. And they worked outside in all weathers. But, you know, it was said that you got used to it after a while. I don't know, maybe things are different these days. Another thing, the men working outside in the tannery yard had to have a regular anthrax injections which apparently weren't very nice and then of course there was the smell if you've ever been anywhere near a tannery i haven't got to tell you how bad that can be and of course here it was just that bad people would smell of it when they went home it got into their skins into their clothes and it was something you couldn't lose being it was a factory environment obviously accidents happened Apparently, a common accident was to stitch through the finger. There was a nurse on site, and the site had its own fire brigade because fire was a constant risk as well. And yes, even here they had strikes. In the 70s, um, strikes took place here, so it wasn't all a bed of roses. It's always interesting to see an exhibition like this because social history is so important. As people grow old and die, they take the history with them. And if we're not careful, we'd lose all the information that we have here. Luckily, people have come out of the woodwork for this exhibition, who some of them have even worked here. And, uh, you know, the, the knowledge about the place will be increased as a result, which is fantastic. So, for over a century, between them, Baileys and Moreland gave well-paid employment to a large number of people and supported the economy of the town. However, that started coming to an end in 1982 when Moreland's closed down. Um, they were bought out by Baileys, funnily enough. <laughs> and they continued to work under the Moreland's name, owned by Baileys, up until 1992, when of course Baileys closed. So then the industry was lost to the town forever. I am going to be talking to the organiser in a minute, so while we do that, we'll just have one last look around. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with Alison, who is the lovely lady who's put this exhibition on today. 
Oh, yeah. I'm good, thank you. Oh, Tom, why did you put this exhibition on? I'm glad you did. Well, what brought you to do it? Well, um, Red Brick Building got some funding from Historic England, mm -hmm. and um, that was about celebrating everyday heritage. So we really, really wanted to focus on people's experiences um, and the fact that the building had a history that people don't really know about. And lots of people go by this, you know, every day, and they have no idea that it was once a factory. And the same with the Bailey's building up the road. Um, so we just really wanted to focus on sharing those memories and capturing people's feelings and thoughts about having worked here. Um, and it's really timely because people are getting older. Um, of course, so. it. And it's, it's recent history. I mean, I've talked to somebody earlier on who was telling me that even up to the mid 70s, when you left school at 15, yeah. you came here, you went to Bailey's, or you went to Clark's. That's your choice, yes. wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then, I mean, a hundred years old plus of employing people yeah. in this town and the economy of this town is yeah. the pen Yeah, huge thing for it. Yeah, and I think, I haven't got an exact number, but I think they, at one point, Moreland's employed kind of between 1800 and 2000. 2400 of Bailey's, I think. Yeah, and exactly. Yeah, I've been doing research over there. There's a poster over there. Great posters. Um, <laughs> And considering that the population of the town was probably kind of about 10,000 at the time, you know, that's quite a massive mm -hmm. oh, it is. And also, it had, it was a company that had kind of international reach, so it was making things and negotiating and making deals with people in Germany and Russia. You mean it was somebody yeah. selling yeah. 700? Yeah. yeah, crazy! Yeah. So it's quite, I always think that's quite nice that, you know, it's kind of a small town in Somerset, but mm -hmm. it's really linking up. And it was hard work here, wasn't it? Really Working outside in the yard in all hours, lifting heavy skins. Yeah, really and hard. The smell. Oh, you don't even want to begin to think about the smell, do you? Yeah. Oh dear. Yeah, I think someone said to me that you, they, you know, if you were going from Glastonbury to Street, you start holding your nose, <laughs> see it, or hold your breath, yes. and like and see if you can get the whole way across. <laughs> Absolutely. But yeah, really hard physical yeah. work, especially like in this yard and mm -hmm. doing the tanning and stuff. So, and then also really skilled work. So the people who were doing the cutting and the stitching and all of that stuff, really, really precise. Highly skilled. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. And of course, with little bits of history that people will know. Um, Cut up in the year, but uh, Cassius Clay, as he was yeah. then, fought Henry Cooper, yes, that's and they right. were both wearing yeah, Bailey's yeah. gloves, yeah. like just over yeah, there. Exactly. How fantastic is that? From uh, Glaston. Yeah, exactly. And apparently, the, um, Bailey's gloves were the kind of approved brand from by the British Board of Boxing Control. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And the, Bailey's also made. Stuff, uh, sporting stuff that was exported to the States. So loads of softball and baseball equipment. They made fencing, gauntlets, um, they made hockey and rugby stuff. So that's just amazing. So have you heard the interesting stories? Because you must have had people who, turning up here for the first time who've never been here since they worked. Yeah, 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 so many interesting. Well, one thing that's been really nice just at the, in the exhibition is lots of people kind of bumping into people that they worked with and yeah. recognizing people. So that was really nice. Um, yeah, lots of it. Uh, so quite a few of the ladies who worked in the stitching room saying, well, you weren't really a proper stitcher. <laughs> so your finger. Yes, it was a common injury here. Yeah. Was stitching yeah. your finger, wasn't and it? There was a nurse on site, so she um, dealt with you. Yeah. I can't quite work out whether you dealt with in a, um, a kind of ward way or in a slightly functional way. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, so yeah, so a few injuries that yeah. people have talked yeah. about. Um, quite interesting um, stories about, you know, that kind of make you think about the difference between then and now. So lots of people have said you'd never be able to complete running in that way, you know, with health and safety and that kind of stuff and the chemicals involved. Um, and also some people have talked about the uh, way that it was for women and young girls. You were saying about people who come when they're 15 and come out from school. So saying think about girls coming as 15 year olds to work in a factory. And, you know, um, one lady who worked in the wages department, her task was to go and collect the, the wages cards yes. and take them back to the office to calculate what they would be getting. But she had to, you know, walk through the yard. And no, no, the, no. And, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so all of those things are kind of interesting. So it's a nice combination of seeing how things have changed and developed and how things definitely were different back then, but also, you know, people that still to inhabit as part of a kind of living history. Well, I mean, it's important because, I mean, history deals with the famous people, the kings, the queens, yeah. 
and social history deals with people. I mean, that's why I I, I went into archaeology mm -hmm. when I was younger because archaeology is the history of normal people, yeah, yeah, exactly. and I think it's so important. One of the things I've always wanted to do, and I admire you for doing this, because I've always wanted to do something like this: the Somerset and Dorset Railway. Yeah. Um, we're losing people in workforce, yeah, and the social history of that, yeah. again with the influence of the Clark yeah, yeah. and everything. Yeah. Maybe that'd be another one. Yeah, definitely, there's no shortage of interesting projects. Absolutely, you can get a bit of get a bit of money and absolutely yeah. not. Let's, let's do another one. Anyway, this has been fantastic it's talking to you. Thank you for this amazing exhibition. I'm so glad you enjoyed it. I have enjoyed it. I haven't heard about it this morning. Really? Luckily, it popped up on my feed. Your interview with Radio yeah, Somerset. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I've got to go down there and see that. Okay, it's been fantastic. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed watching that as much as I enjoyed visiting it. It was absolutely brilliant, fantastic. It's lovely to see some social history because as you know, as you can see around me here, this factory was huge and employed a lot of people. And it affected a lot of people's lives. And when it closed, it affected the town. And it's great that they're in there telling that history. But for now, that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Bye-bye.